Welcome, everybody. Last day of the month, November 30th. I'm John Zadar, and you're watching On Top and Hot. These are brought to you by Penny Boys. Everybody knows PB Alerts, but you need to check out PBU, Penny Boys University. Honestly, they've got an education you don't want to pass up. So what I do here on On Top and Hot is I look at OTC stocks, penny stocks, things that have got potential, things that should run, things we should be looking at. And I found three today that had so much potential and have got bang left over that I wanted to share them with you. So come along with me and I'll show you what I got. All right, we're locked and loaded with our first stock. We're going to do our initial DD on these OTC stocks on the otcmarket.com site. The reason I come here first is because this is where all the financials are, the filings, and the information on stock. Primary information, and it's given to us by the SEC and FINRA. This is the only site they put that information out there for OTC stock investors. So it's the best place to start. All right. Let's take a look at how the day ended today on the OTC market. It was kind of unusual. We had a very high volume dollar day, $3 billion. We normally between two and two and a half billion, no matter what we're doing. Today we did three billion. Share count is up, thank God. We were at 11 billion yesterday, but keep this in mind, 30 billion is a slow day. This is still half of that. So we're not out of the dark, dark woods yet. Funny thing though is trades is about right. We're at about roughly, you know, a half a million trades and we're not getting a lot of shares, which tells you money's up, trades are normal, share volume down, they're buying more expensive stocks. These sub penny stocks aren't getting a lot of love right now. So if you're invested in cheap, cheap penny stocks and sub penny stocks, could be dry for you right now. All right. Like I said, locked in, loaded. We have XBRAF up here. This is Zebra Brands Limited. It is a new company, not long on the market. We'll get to that. They finished the day, and I'll be darned if that didn't just change. It said 55 just a second ago. So <laughs> it is now at 52 cents. Uh, okay, it was higher on percentage, obviously, too. So we're down to 62% it gained today. Hopefully, it doesn't drop anymore while we're talking. They are pink current, they have independent directors, so they could uplist to, say, the QB. All you need is to be a penny to uplist to the QB. You just have to audit all of your records. However, in saying that, audits cost money. You need a CPA. They ain't got no money yet. No money at all. But they did have relative volume. There was a lot of excitement around this company today. 45 times her normal volume. Imagine driving by McDonald's and seeing 45 times as many cars there as normal. Right, it would stand out. Well, that's what we got going here from 10,000 to almost a half a million. Now, what is their share count on this? Is it anything decent? Not getting a lot of information probably because the company's new. I did do some investigating. I can't tell you what the outstanding share count is, but we need to know the float. That's what you and I trade on the open market. And it is a hundred million, just over, but it is a hundred million shares. So disclosures, I know they've got nothing going there. We've checked the financials. I don't even think they have a company description yet. No, we got no description yet, but I'm gonna get to that, I promise. So we're gonna just jump over to the news, which will take care of everything else for us. Problem is, they don't give us very much news. And I knew there had to be more news for this company. And there was. Now, I'm looking at this news over at Cision. It's just laid out real nice here. Uh, the company is brand new. We never heard about Zebra until March. In March, there was a $5 million placement. Someone bought 25 million shares. Along with the shares came about 12 million warrants. Now, the warrants were cheap. Uh, this is a guaranteed promissory note that they can come back later between a certain time and date and buy shares at a guaranteed low price. And he was given a price of 35 cents, which it was way less than that then. But if the price went over 50 cents, he could cash in his warrants sooner immediately if the price stays over 50 cents for 10 days well the price just went over 50 cents yesterday for the first day not that that's a big point except to say the stock is growing a lot faster than they anticipated 
The next time we hear about Zebra is when it finally hits the market anywhere in the world. It came on in Canada. That was the first time in the middle of October that their shares were being sold. Then they complete a cannabis facility in Netherlands. They got permission from the Dutch government, only one of five companies. So they are in an elite group and this is a facility that is 2,000 square feet not very big this has been built for the purpose of medicinal cannabis cultivation trials and if it is a success they can scale it out to 100,000 square feet so there is room to grow here and again they are an elite group one of five only five have been approved now just to give a a good indication that the company is thinking globally. They went out and got a trademark and this trademark has been granted in Australia, Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Israel, Jamaica, Mexico, Norway, New Zealand, Peru, Switzerland, United Kingdom, and the European Union. And in addition, applications for the name and slogan have been filed in Argentina, Canada, South Africa, USA, Uruguay, and Zimbabwe. Folks, they're going around the world everywhere. So don't think it is little dreams this company has. All right, so where are we at then? So they got their trademarks, then they get their shares put on the German market. Again, they're doing some more work in the cultivation in the Netherlands. Then they submit a THC lemonade to Health Canada to be approved. They're working with THC, CBD, and CBG as well. Then they start selling in America. This is November. We are uh, just two weeks ago, the company started selling in America. It is a brand new company. Then they get a private placement here. Now this private placement, they've got two pieces of news for it, was for $1.3 million, Canadian dollars, but it was from one investor. And these were just regular common shares and no, he did not get any warrants with these either. Now the next piece of news is the whole reason we're actually here. It's Catalyst. Catalyst for tomorrow, December 1st. That's right. Zebra announces that Mexican Supreme Court sets date of December 1st to vote on granting Zebra an injunction to commercialize cannabis. Understand it is not legal in Mexico yet. It's been very close, almost was actually done and then they regressed. So no, it's not legal there. And this is definitely an advantage over everybody. Let's check this out. Zebra Brands, a cannabis company, announces that it has been informed that the Mexican Supreme Court will convene on Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, to deliberate and vote on a claim by Zebra's wholly owned Mexican subsidiary, Desert MX, to obtain an injunction that could result in Zebra being positioned to hold an outright first mover advantage in the Mexican CBD and CBG market. If an injunction is granted, Zebra will be authorized to operate irrespective of when or even whether or not the Mexican government legalizes cannabis and the injunction would apply only to Zebra. Folks, are you hearing me? Can you say Monopoly? <laughs> They'd be the only company in all of Mexico selling CBD, CBG beverages. Whoa. What else we got here that we can read? Uh, Zebra believes Mexico has the potential to be one of the largest near-term country cannabis consumer markets in the world upon legalization of cannabis. Mexico is also within the North American free trade zone, giving it considerable cultivation and product manufacturing cost advantages over Canada and the United States. Uh, the upcoming hearing is the culmination of a three-year legal strategy challenging the unconstitutionality of the Mexican cannabis law. The claim successfully navigated lower courts and is now scheduled for a Supreme Court on December 1st. The case is listed on a Supreme Court's official website. Uh, the claim filed by Desert MX with the Mexican Supreme Court for a constitutional injunction under the terms of the Mexican law would if granted, provide the authorization necessary to enable Desert MX to import cannabis seeds into Mexico, cultivate, process cannabis with low levels of THC under 1% 
In America, it's under three. Theirs is really stringent, under 1%, and could allow for the manufacture and sale of CBD and CBG and associated products. Folks, that's huge news. This is a catalyst that's got this running today, has put it over that 50 cents, and is probably gonna run tomorrow morning right up until the decision is released. So this may be a good one to check out. Last piece of news, Zebra granted trademarks in Mexico. Now they may be getting the injunction just for CBD and CBG right now, but they are getting trademarks for the THC as well. They know the big picture down the road. Sooner or later, Mexico is gonna go legal. And, the, and whether they do or not, <laughs> that is the most amazing thing here. I'm not quite sure this is actually gonna fly. I really don't. But if tomorrow the Mexican government gives Zebra exclusive rights to sell CBD, CBG beverages across the entire country without competitors, Folks, I'm in this one. I will be in this one so quick, and I'm sure it's probably gonna hit a dollar tomorrow before it even gets the decision on the table. Just a feeling because, well, I think a lot of people are gonna see what I see. Monopoly. Okay, let's go take a look at the site so you can see what these drinks look like. And the best place to do that is on their own site. So we're over here at Zebra Brand's website, their beverage page, and they tell us straight up that they're working with seltzers, soft drinks, iced teas, lemonades, waters, energy drinks, and CBD sports beverages. And the real neat thing about this company is that they are branding every product. It's not just we're Nest Tea Ice Tea and we've got 13 flavors. No, every flavor gets a brand and a slogan logo. Like this one here, you got Madcap. These are their seltzers. I'm sure they come in different flavors. This one here is Lemon Lime. Your choice, THC or CBD infused. And their slogan, Madcap. It's crazy good. You move on to Hijack which is strictly THC. I don't see any CBD option here and I don't even know what flavor it is. All they say is it has a break-free fresh taste. Well, I'm not quite sure what fresh taste tastes like. I do see they have the fresh taste in the sugar-free version though, in case that's of interest to you. They've got iced tea. This is Ola High, it's high time. I wonder if uh, Miller is gonna get in touch with them for that. This is THC CBD versions, both of the iced teas. They have sports drinks only available in CBD. Maybe you shouldn't be exercising when you're high. I'm not quite sure what the message is. And along with that, they have other things in their sports water, NAC and other ingredients. Don't know exactly what they are. Then they've got their Vicious Citrus Lemonade, Lemonade for Renegades. I knew I was gonna get tongue-tied there. Lemonade for Renegades. This is THC or CBD infused as well. This is what they have submitted to Canada. And then they have your good old plain Jane old fashioned water, except they've spiked theirs with CBD or THC. Imagine giving your friends THC water when they just wanted a drink. Let's be nice, only on April Fools. Okay, and this one, High Castle, drink like a king. So there's a quick overview of the drinks they have. And if they get this decision to come through from Mexico, they could have these on the market. And when you have no competitors and you've covered all these different sectors of the beverage market, this is quite exciting. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. I'll show you what happened today and let's see if we can project what's gonna happen tomorrow. So we are over here at TOS. That's the trading platform you're looking at. I got it for free from TD Ameritrade just for signing up. So can you. You don't have to give a deposit. You don't actually have to trade with them to use this. So sign up for free, get this for free, make money for free. <laughs> I don't know about all that. All right, we are looking at XBRAF. Now I normally start off in a six month, four hour chart, but folks, this is all there is. That is all there is to show you. This is when their very first trade goes. I can go back, I can go back four hours, six months, and it's the same date. It hovers right there, 1124. So that is all we've got to look at right there. 
and let's see that's our five hour five minute I, I like that last look let's look at it on the hour all right you can see from the time that she launched her low here was 23 cents uh, she got close to it a couple times here she's slowly rising and now she's taking off but I mean what can I tell you folks she has no history just a lot of catalysts at least a lot of optimistic catalysts we don't know anything for sure but we're gonna find out tomorrow tomorrow there's gonna be a decision the stock ran today let's back up and see uh, five day five minute all right you can see it was very thin here we, we just got dashes there wasn't even multiple orders in the five minutes at each one of these show then we're starting to get some tags here more single she's actually rising we don't see a lot of any extra volume now we're getting these huge pokes we haven't had any huge pokes that's the first huge pokes we've ever had now we've got uh, let's see what we got going on here oh yeah okay this definitely looks like it has some power sitting in reserves here uh, we got a crossover coming here and you had the MACD running down while the price was actually running up so volume got strong yeah and with what's gonna happen tomorrow this is gonna be a very interesting stock tomorrow I really can't tell you except except I know this much if this Supreme Court in Mexico comes back with a decision that is in favor of this company and they do get the monopoly folks you're gonna want a piece of this pie even if it doesn't run tomorrow they have a monopoly they're gonna be the only company in the entire country selling all those different beverages to all the different types of people who drink all those different beverages and they're gonna make a killing they're gonna make a killing so we're gonna have to wait and see uh, right now our price is at 55 cents it was up to 69 cents as a high it started the day out way down here at 33 cents so it, it's very difficult to tell what's gonna happen with this stock I just expect a lot of people are watching it right now so I wouldn't expect any down action until maybe you hear the court say no then there may be a drop in it and God only knows how long it'll take them to get things going then they are going to be selling their products around but this is an advantageous situation that we would like to see happen while we are in the front row seats so keep your eye out on this one tomorrow 55 cents maybe a deal under a buck I don't know I can't estimate guesstimate what this could be worth if the Supreme Court comes in favor of uh, Exebra brands <laughs> I'm just dumbfounded thinking about that all right let's go take a look at the next one now this next company ticker BTZI bots Inc just got back on the market they were in the expert market they got pulled off I don't know exactly how long ago not too long and they came back from the expert market where nobody could buy or sell their shares right to pink current and that was today and when they came back on well look it jumped 480 percent today now if that isn't amazing enough look their average volume is just under 11 million and they did just over 11 million virtually the same amount of shares moved but they went up 480 percent unbelievable so what does this company do well they are located in San Juan Puerto Rico and they develop and service blockchain solutions and robotics for their clientele their share structure pretty big they got about a half a billion shares here so you know don't count on any low float bounces financials uh they used to make money they're not making money right now they got nothing going on and their disclosures everything is caught up they are pink current and they just had a 10q that is a quarterly report it's got a lot of information in it and we may have to tag into that so let's jump on over to the news and see what's going on there <laughs> the first thing you notice is well I'm on the wrong page right that's news for MSIG not bots well, fact of the matter is back in July the company changed their name from MSIG to bots and changed the ticker so this is all about this company back in 2019 
Now I scrolled down further and what do you know, we've got some news here for bots. And this goes from October till now. But where's 2020? And 2020 was a very pivotal year, so we need to see that information. You're lucky I know where to look. But first, let's take a look at the current news here. They got a couple of things going on right now. First, they acquired a new subsidiary, TechX Mining and Gaming PC Solutions. And they also announced the grand opening of Bitcoin Mining Training Academy. This Bitcoin Mining Training is very popular right now. There's a lot of white collar professionals that want to mine as a passive income. So they are providing the training. They also went ahead and started training for Bitcoin Miner Repair. And then they just had their first class actually graduate for Bit Miners. It's a big market and it is growing. So they're all involved with that. They also put out a, a cryptocurrency coin called the President Trump coin. They got that on Binance Smart Train and some other decentralized uh, exchanges. And then they've got two patents that they have applied for. One is very interesting. All these companies that want to give tokens or cryptocurrency as a dividend, the SEC and FINA are having a difficult time getting these into the books the right way. So this company's come up with a way to book those dividends that are tokens and cryptocurrency, and they're going to patent it. The other patent is a way to prove that the cryptocurrency you're buying was gotten through green power sourcing, whether that be solar or volcano it doesn't matter as long as you're not putting off co2 then you have got green power sourced cryptocurrency now like i said we're missing all that 2020 news but i know where to look so we're zooming in on a 10q that is a quarterly finance report i love reading 10qs and 10ks when you get an opportunity to because this is where all the information is everything not just their financials though you can see what they're spending what they're losing even how much employees and uh, management are being paid however you also get all the deals they're making deals they're gonna make the stuff they've been through the stuff they think they're gonna go through they even tell you what they're worried about and the risk you're not going to get that in a press release so I love coming to these things so the first thing I want to show you is their finances now this is going to be a little weird you see here it says that in 2021 net income or loss is $51,000 they're losing money right now but look at last year 57 million up how do you go from 57 million last year to 51,000 loss well, actually what happened last year was a huge pivot. They abandoned what they were doing and they bought four other companies and they brought them on board. And all of those companies had a value and it went on the books last year. So that's what you see there is all their acquisitions. And I can show those to you right down here. Looking at this, it was in 2013 that the company started and they originally were a full service day spa in Montrose, California. Now, with everything that was picking up about cannabis, they pivoted into recreational and medicinal cannabis along with e-cigarettes. And for the next five to six years, they did pretty good selling them. Made a lot of deals with a lot of cannabis companies and working with them. Then, in 2020, made a serious decision. They had elected to discontinue all operations in the cannabis markets and the e-cig markets and were pivoting again and focusing on robotics and blockchain technologies. Now what's interesting is that all four of the subsidiaries that they acquired, they acquired on the same day. Now I don't know if they got them from the same people or what, but it's very interesting. On May 14th, 100% of all four companies was acquired. First Bitcoin Capital is the only one in operation right now, and they tell us that this is involved with blockchain development and cryptocurrency. They have Coin QX Exchange. Don't tell us anything about it, but I'm presuming it's an exchange. It's not operational. 420 Wi-Fi, I don't know what that is, folks, but that sounds like cannabis. And they just got done saying that they had abandoned all of their cannabis pursuits. So I'm not quite sure what this is, but it's not operating yet either. And the last one is Dbot Technologies. I'm going to presume this is going to be the robot subsidiary company, and they're not operating yet either. Now, one thing I thought was kind of curious on here they do own cryptocurrency. Now they say most of the cryptocurrency they own isn't on the open market or it's illiquid. It's just difficult to buy and sell. But in either case, 
this is everything that they own. Now, I don't know anything about these companies. I can't tell you if any of it's good or bad, but they own it. It's all here. They've got plans to do something with their exchanges and their cryptocurrency company. So this may all come into play. Now, we're going to go look at this chart. And this chart shows that when this company hit expert market, it plummeted. Now, the expert market is a timeout. They pull it off of the open market and put it into timeout called expert. You and I and everybody else cannot buy or sell the shares. It can't be bought or purchased by any of us, but it can be bought by brokers and marketers. And for some reason, every time it goes into the expert market, these stocks plummet. The price goes way, way down. And as soon as it comes back on the market, you get this huge jump. And I'm sure whoever took the price down and bought more is making a lot of money. And I'm sure that's what it's all about. But the fact is, when it starts on the basement floor, you get big bounces when they come back onto the current market. And today was a huge bounce, over 300%, almost 400%. And that's because it was on the basement floor. See, it only needs to move this much when you're that far down, when you have zeros in front of your number. That's 100%, and that is 300%. You didn't see my fingers move, did you? No, because it's such a little movement. And that's what caused the big jump today. It was so far down on the bottom. Now, it looks as though it's about ready to break a very strong resistance. It gets above this, I can see it regaining a lot of what it lost. So let's go take a look at this chart and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this one has a full chart. That is six months, four hours, BTZI. And we have a high right there now let's see how close that gets i can't look over there let's see all right so it is actually higher you know it's way higher it's sitting on top of this uh whole 200 average this average pretty much takes everything and averages it together it tells you the basic trend of the stock so we had a high way back here and somewhere in here somewhere in here she went on to the expert market don't know exactly when. Now, we looked at this back here. I put these blue lines up to remind me that we've looked at this stock for a morning bounce. And we said on this day, it looked good that it would bounce the next day. And it did, and it bounced the next day. So we had three days of climb out of this and caught one of them. Went sideways and has fallen. Now, when it got here, maybe the expert market came in here. Maybe it was already on the expert market because, like I said, they like to drag the price down when it's in the expert market. And look, it hit the floor. Triple zero one. You can't go any lower than that on the open market. That is the basement floor. And it bounced up off of that, but then came back down. Let's come down to, uh, let's say, 10 days. That gives it it. All right, so here we had that huge, unexpected, radical drop, and it hit the low. Boom, hit the floor, couldn't go any lower, triple zero one, and bounced up off of that. But I don't think these quick, fast, hard, radical drops to lows count as the bounce off where it's gonna start growing. I think it was unexpected. So look, it just started dribbling back down until it organically, again, hit that low. Once it organically hit it, then it started to take off. Now, I told you, now wh what is this date? That's 11.29. Now, I gotta tell you, this is probably being dragged down all through the expert market because it came on today. Today is when it came back on the market. So all of this stuff was happening with marketers and brokers and we don't, we're not a part of that. So I can't explain how it happens, when it happens or you know anything. All I know is when it came back on today, at that low price, people saw this as a freaking bargain. Now, why wouldn't they? Let's back out here. We are on the 30 minute. Let's go back to the four hour. All right, right there is where it fell. Right there, I put a line across the top. Let's come back in. It does, it does make better sense here. I'm gonna get rid of this line. Uh, clean this up a little bit for us. Oh, okay, we'll just put a new one in there right there. Now the reason I choose that is because this is the top of where it fell. So that becomes our ceiling. And we were waiting for this to go down and swerve around and come back up to that point. And it's hitting it right now. This is the strong resistance. It's got to get up over this. Now when we back out, and I'm going to back out, uh, let's go to uh, one month. 
Well, we're at uh, 11 cents here. And we are down at, what, six cents? Yeah, about six cents here. So there's almost 100% gain just to get back up to here. And I'm only back 20 days. This was dribbling and falling. So I expect that once this gets over, you've got the 200 sitting right there. It is, it is going to have a tendency to want to power past that since it's been locked up and cooped up in the expert market. There was a lot of lift today and it pushed up hard. So I would look at this, you can see the volume, there was a lot of excitement and it could be pent up or it could have already expended itself. It's really tough to tell. Let's look at the last five minutes of the day. Let's see what we got here. So you had your big push and it went sideways. There was no giving up 50%. There's nowhere it's even close. We're lucky if it gave away 10%. And it hit a new high at the end of the day. For Pete's sake, folks, that tells me it's got more to give. It was its biggest burst of volume was at the end of the day and not the beginning. Another curious fact. So everything looks good here right now. It just touched. It tagged it once. I would expect it to try to tag it a second time. I don't expect it to burst right through. I expect it to hit it, come back down just a little bit, hit it again, and then it should have a stronger chance of getting through. And if you can get two bars above it, it should start climbing. You should get a bounce out of this. So this looks good. All the, uh, all the bars are going in the right direction. Volume was strong. We're sitting at a high. It did fall back off of that high already. Sitting right on top of the 10 where the last three bars were sitting. It looks prime to go, folks. Keep your eye on BTZI tomorrow. This has probably got leftover pent up excitement from what's going on. And keep in mind, they've got a lot of things they're working on right now. They are a fresh new company since they've made all the changes. So let's see what they can do. And maybe they'll do something tomorrow. And the last stock we are looking at is another one that just came off the expert market, went straight to pink current. I don't understand it. Don't know how long they were there, but look at that gain. 900% gains today. Finished today at just over three cents, which means she started with an extra zero in front of her today at about three tenths of one penny. And she went to three cents, which is almost 10 times. Uh, iWallet Corporation is the name of the company. It is pink current now. They got a verified uh, profile, a transfer agent. It all looks good. You'd never know they came out of the pit. But you wanna see what's really amazing? Now, we will keep in mind that it's been on the expert market, and I don't know how long, but their average volume count was 5,500 shares a day. Today, they did almost 5.5 million. That is almost 1,000x. Actually, it comes out to 982 times her regular volume. That is 10,000% more volume today than yesterday. 10,000% more. That's an incredible amount of increase. And most search engines won't show you that if you go trying to find it. So what is her share count? Is it anything to brag about? It is. We got 20 million shares here. Great share count, which may have something to do with why it moved so quickly today. A nice slow share count like that. Her financials are ancient. There's nothing here since 2014. No money coming in. Wonder how long it was on the expert market. Jeez. So filings, they've gone current. We have two filings here, one in September and one in November. They're alternative filing forms. Uh, they are 10, like 10Q, 10K. These are called 1012s. And I haven't jumped into them, but obviously they have no money and they just went current today. So I don't know how much more could actually be learned from them. And speaking of how much more can be learned, there's no news. Well, there is, but this is all from 2015. That isn't doing anybody any good. Now, what this company used to do, and I don't know if they still do. I honestly don't. I haven't checked. I was only interested in why they bounced. This company makes gadgets that lock up and can only be opened up with biometrics. It could be a passphrase that you say. It could be your fingerprint. They have wallets, medicine jars, all sorts of peripheral items you can connect to your other gadgets. So I don't know exactly why they're not making any money and what's going on. It seems like they have hot products and they could do something with them, but as you saw, 
There's nothing going on for a long time. And now that they've come back, it, it's not free. It costs money to come back. Now that they've come back, maybe something is going to start happening. So let's go take a look at that chart. All right, Iwall, six-month, four-hour chart. Uh, well, it's it's got a little more activity than, than I expected, but you can see there's just no volume to really talk about here. And we are going all the way back to, well, that's March. That's March of this year. We had a huge jump here, and I can't tell you why, because there's no news. I'd actually have to go to Google to find out why it jumped. And it jumped all the way to 11 cents here, and it did it in one day, and just buckled down and lost it all. So whatever happened here was very short-lived, and I don't know what it was. <laughs> All right, so she came down a lot here, and you can see, now this is where I'm gonna guess she went expert, right there, right? No sales, uh, and it says for the last 30 days, her average was five and a half thousand shares. So I can't imagine, let's see if I can see that one there. That's uh, 80,000 shares right there in that section after market. So I, I, I really can't tell you, but I can see that she jumped from 003, told you, all the way up to here. And she stopped here. You can see she went clear up to 48. Folks, we're talking almost, oh, gee whiz, 1,300%, 1,400%. A huge jump coming off of the expert market. But now, keep in mind what I told you about the last stock. Look at her price. 001. Where was she before she went down there? She was at two cents. Even more, she was up at almost three cents. So she dropped 10 times, a thousand percent she dropped. So I don't know if this is when it went on to the expert market. The brokers and the marketers tore it down. It came back and it had its huge jump. Not only did it gain back what it lost, it surpassed it. Went way past it. So, is there going to be more of this tomorrow? I really don't know. I would expect the news press, honestly, to come out and say what the heck they're doing. You guys still making wallets? You still making Madison caps? What, what are you doing now? So, I would expect something to come from this now that they're back on the market. That means they're going to be doing something. So, I keep my ears and eyes open. But, for tomorrow, well, you know, the day ended strong. I, I, I want to come in on that five minute, five day. All right, she popped real hard early in the morning. When did that end? Uh, that was 10 o'clock in the morning. There's our morning bounce, right? She climbs, hits that, and then dips. At 10, 10.05, we normally get out of a play. If you just want to make some quick money, get a strong jump in a short amount of time, maybe go play some golf or spend time with your wife, whatever. You got it out of the way here by 10 in the morning. So then it went sideways, tried to hang on, and dipped. And then it started to kick. At the end of the day, we had a crossover right here. You can see the volume kicked up. One, two, three, four. She started to push. She tagged the 50-day SMA. We like to see a double tag, and you can normally see a crossover if there's strength in the technicals. We see she is rising on the RSI. We are rising on the MACD following a crossover, and the price is pushing up. Volume isn't tremendously strong, but... There was a lot of volume here today, a lot of volume. And I don't know if that's going to carry over tomorrow, but you don't turn your back on 982 times volume increase in one day. So yes, they did just come back on the market. There could be some leftover excitement for tomorrow. So come on, folks, put eyewall on your charts and at least keep an eye on this. I don't know what it's going to do. It could fall. It could absolutely fall. Now, in saying that, we had a couple that we looked at yesterday, and I'm just thinking about this now, so let's toss these in here real quick. We looked at this one that had a huge rise yesterday, has a uh, conference call December 2nd, has a finalization of a closing of an acquisition on December 15th. We're expecting a valuation to put this company way up because of that acquisition for hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of dollars when they only paid, uh, I think, $3 million for it. But we looked at it yesterday after it had a big jump and went sideways and started to fall. Now, she fell hard today. Now, we weren't looking at this for a run. We're looking at this for a swing. 
you got to be looking to at least December 15th. So right now would be a very good time to take a small entry. Take about 20% right here. She's fallen under the 200. This uh, and she wanted to hold. You can see that, but she fell even deeper, found another support, and you can see if we draw a line here. There you go. She is sitting on top of this one and this is sitting on top of it there. So there's our support. It could fall down to here, but it's above the 50, and I think it's going to try to pinch above that 200 with all the catalyst coming. So this would be a good time to buy 20%. If it dips, you can get another 20%. Don't buy everything at one time. If you get a confirmation that it's moving up, then buy yourself 40-50% more of what you want. Control your risk. You buy everything at one time, one move can put you in jeopardy. So you always want to keep control of how much you're investing and be able to average down if it goes the wrong way that you weren't anticipating. You minimize your risk and get a better price. So when it does come up, you're making better profits. So this one is on its way back up. It does have a crossover right now, but again, we got lots of catalysts to consider. Now we were also looking at AMBS because AMBS has 10% of the stock that TOMDF has in their outstanding shares. So they were running simply based on that stock, it appeared. We didn't see any fresh news. Let we this is where we finished looking at it yesterday. And we drew some lines in here and I said you may want to put in a bid up here in the morning if you wanted to catch this. And I see it got pretty bloody close, pretty close. So our bid would have caught that and we could have got into this. Now we are on the five minute here. And I see the line I drew is pretty much where its high went. Maybe it was luck. It just seems to me that we had based this on this jump right here. This bar became my standard. So I use that right up here. So it came back down after hitting a high, was not a dip, it was a fall, and it's fallen under the 50. Now, I thought this was moving only because TOD, TOMDF was climbing because she has 10% invested in her. Well, she went sideways today and did not fall along with the other company. So this is an interesting one. She's actually got opposite technicals that TODMF have, or TOMDF. She is actually turning up right now, looking like she wants to cross her 50. And the last one we looked at, TBPMF, Tetra Biopharma, which is my favorite biotech because it works with cannabis only and because I am highly invested in her didn't have a great day, had great news yesterday and did not respond appropriately. She had a bump and threw it right back down. Looks like we're looking at a mirror, right? It's just the same image on both sides and it came right back down. Got a little bit of a kick here, but I still have very high hopes for this one. It's at a great, great buy, folks. I mean, I bought most of my shares at 30 cents. I've been averaging down ever since. She is right now at 17 cents. She hit a high at pre-market of 22 cents and never reached it again. But as I said, I still have a lot of faith and money invested in this company. So there you go. Three stocks that have a lot of potential for tomorrow. Two of them just came back off the expert market straight to pink today. One at 500, the other at 900% gains. But one just had normal volume. The other one, oh man, crazy volume. But both have only been on the market for one day. There could be a lot of extra excitement still waiting to be cashed in on. Watch them tomorrow. But the one we really want to watch is Zebra. Zebra has that concrete date tomorrow, December 21st, right? This is when the Supreme Court from Mexico makes a judgment on their injunction to see if they get permission to sell their CBD and CBG drinks across the entire country, regardless of the law. Imagine that. I can't tell you folks, it's mind boggling to think they could have a monopoly over an entire country when, well, there's nobody else there yet. There will be someday, but that can be a ways off. So this decision comes in tomorrow as a yes, this stock could easily run, right? Easily. But if it comes in a no, this stock could easily drop too. So it's a coin toss. We have no clue what is going to go on. So I'm not giving any advice. I will wish you luck. So remember folks, whatever you do, study, 
check out the information, do a Google, go to the OTC markets, get some information. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you, folks.